Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's learn how to use the tool. G'day guys and welcome back today to another Obsidian video. Today we're going to be having a look at what is probably my most favourite plugin of the month or maybe even the year. Who knows, but I'm loving it. Uh, the plugin is called Metabind. Uh, it's been created by a member of the TTRPG Obsidian community by the name of Lemons. And if we come in here and type in Metabind, you can see the Metabind plugin. All right, so it's by Moritz. Uh, come through, have a look, do the uh, the install, do the enable, all the usual. Have a look at the README. This is a pretty advanced plugin. I just wanted to stress the importance of the documentation on this one. Um, if you go down into the README of the actual plugin, you can see the docs are available here. Uh, if you actually open that up, drag it over to this window, uh, we can actually see here that there's a really good README and you can see like all the import fields and things that I'm going to show you how to do are well documented in this reference document. All right, it basically shows you, you know, a, a full breakdown of how these things work, um, what is available, um, what arguments are available that can be added to these things. So arguments allow you to modify things. Um, and it's it's a really good readme and document. So please take your time to go through this. Um, this plugin is in active development. All right, it's changing. So it's always possible that something's gonna change. I might show you something in this video that doesn't work in six months or a year. All right, it could be that you need to come back and read the readme because that thing has changed. Now, outside of that as well, there's a really good uh, benefit in here. If we go back here, we can see that we've actually got access to the GitHub. Um, you know, the repository's up the very top. Highly recommend that you have a click on that as well. All right because what we can actually see here is in the GitHub is actually the example vault. Um, and the example vault contains a heap of actual uh, examples that are, you know have been provided by Lemons for us to sort of play around with this. And this is where I got a lot of the stuff that I'm using today. So import fields, for example, you can come in here, you can say, all right, I wanna have a look at text import fields and you can actually get the code, you can click copy it, you can paste that into your notes and you can try that yourself. All right, so please do take the time to have a look in here. It's very useful. Um, and with that said, let's jump back to my video. All right, but what does this plugin do? Well, for those of you who have used Data View, you would be aware that we've previously used it. You know, for example, over here on the right to do calculations in our notes. All right, so Data View isn't just for returning lists of notes. You can actually do calculations with it as well. Um, but it's always kind of been a little bit um, delayed in that, you know, you have to leave a note and come back in for that calculation to refresh. That is now changed. Let's just put that out there. This is fantastic. But uh, what else this does, it also gives us the ability to have import fields in our notes. Now, since the first day that I've used this tool, people have been asking me, like, how do you put a drop down in a note? I want to have a template with a list of, let's say, all the races that can be selected. I want to be able to do that. Um, and the problem is that we've been able to put them into notes, right? You can use HTML code in your notes and you can put them through and you can use that to put something in your note and people can select the option, but it doesn't save the value that you select anywhere. And as soon as you leave and come back into the note, well, then it resets and that's obviously a problem. Well, introducing the Metabind plugin, all right? You can have a drop down, and that is basically saved, right? So let's go through, I'll jump to my, my calculator. If I come back, the options are all still there. Now that's fantastic. Now, there is a little bit of a problem here that we've been talking about. It's it's a bit of a technical, we'll get into that later. But basically what we're seeing is the ability to have drop down options that have the values stored, which is obviously huge, but it goes further. Now, what do I mean by that? I've got a drop down here that says donkey walking or let's say griffin flying. I want you to keep your eye on the base speed value in the background. All right, so right now we're at the donkey. The donkey is a base speed of 40. Let's go to walking speed. Notice that's changed to 30. All right, so the walking speed of 30. If we go to flying, all right, we go to 80. Now keep your eye over here on the actual party configuration that I've usually used, right? So my my measuring of how many days it's going to travel between towns. If we want to travel from Halutha to Aris right now, it's going to take us four days. If we change to walking, it's now going to take us 10.6 days. All right, so as you can see, Metabind is what's enabling all of 
of this, all right, it's giving me the import options that I'm using, which means I've completely refreshed my, uh, my travel speed calculator. It's updating in real time or near real time, like there is a little bit of a tick there, but it's certainly very acceptable. Um, and it's storing all of the results in the properties. And that means that you can do some really cool stuff. And just to like sort of showcase here, like, you know, I have the ability to come here and go, all right, we are going to be on a cart pulled by horses. We're gonna be moving at a fast pace. We're encumbered. Uh, we're gonna be traveling for eight hours a day. Do we wanna to go to 10? No, we're gonna to go to six or eight. I think I actually do have something there. <clears throat> What's our exhaustion level? Not, not level two, so speed is halved, right? And it's calculating all of the changes here. Now, all of this top section is being used in these other notes down the top uh, the, on the right here. And I use those through all my location notes. I've also got it so I can say, oh, it's just 150 miles to the next town, so we can check. It's 25 days based on everything we've selected. But now I can come down here and go, all right, well, what if I don't want to travel myself? All right, we're going to be on a cart pulled by horses. That's fine, but I'm going to purchase my travel options. All right, so my danger level. Well, it's a safe route. It's just between two big cities. Uh, it's a familiar route or not a familiar route. Um, we have got four party members and we are going to be, well, we're wealthy travelers. Right? We've got lots of money and I want them to include meals with the travel. So therefore the cost of travel is going right up. All right, you should see it's 18 gold to uh, get along this safe route uh, or 418 gold if I want to have absolute wealthy and lavish meals on my way. Now, I can set the price for coaching coaches, so it might be three copper um, between towns. Uh, this is cost per mile, so you know, we might say it's five. Uh, within the city, I think it is default is one, I've set it to two. Uh, send a messenger from one town or, you know, within the town even, or within multiple towns, I can set that out. Uh, and if I'm on a ship, it might cost me five copper per day, for example. Right, I can do all of this now with this Metabind plugin, and I'm absolutely loving it. And I, I wanted to take the time to walk you through it, all right, because I'm going to make a heap of calculators. I mean, I've already made them. Um, these are all available already on my website. Um, but I wanted to take you through and to show you step by step some of the things that this can do. So uh, let's jump in and have a look. All right. So we're back with the Obsidian TTRPG tutorials, all right? And uh, this is where I'm gonna be hosting and storing everything. Some of you might recognize it. This is actually the vault that's feeding the website. What I've done though, is I've just brought in all of the examples from the actual documentation of this plugin, just so we can have a look and see what it's doing. And I just, let's go into edit mode and let's just have a look at this. So there's two ways to write a query with Metabind, all right? There's, well, for import fields, there's two ways to write import fields. And you can see here we've got an inline version and I'm using this a lot. I like the inline version. It's, it's neat, it's tidy, it doesn't take up much space. Or there's a block version. Now, there is some functionality in the block version that doesn't work in the inline version. I'll just call that out right now. Um, ideally, it's kind of like the fact that it got these, uh, these borders around it, all right, and the ability to put titles in there as well. That's all functionality that exists inside of a block. I'm largely just using the inlines though, and I'm doing my own titles around those, and uh, that way it allows me to format it how I like. Um, so I'm a bit more of a fan of that. All right, now for each example here, we're gonna go through and show you an import and a view. And just so you understand the difference, an input is what's creating the input option in your note. The view is what's effectively uh, displaying the result in, in the note. Now you don't need to have the view. These are two complete separate components of the Metabind plugin. But just to give you an example, the first one we're gonna show you is how to do an import date field. All right, we're gonna store the date field that we select in the date one in the properties. So if I come up here and we turn on properties, I can find date one and it's gonna store it in there, okay? Now, if we go back down and have a look here, let's have a look at this date example. So this is the import. You can see I can select the day, the month, and the year. And if I go back up to my properties, 7-7-2024, all right? So it's updating into there. And that's gonna be the sake for all of this. What I've done it though, is I've basically created a view directly under these options 
that displays the value that I've picked, just so you can see the result as I, as I enter them, that's it. All right, so this is a date picker, nice and easy. Uh, sorry, this is a date, not a date picker, this is a date. The date picker I prefer, because it brings up this fancy menu, all right? And obviously that is kind of handy. I think that's nice and clean. Uh, there's a time option here, so we can go 9, 12 at night. Uh, there's something called an editor, which is like a big chunk of text. Now, the interesting thing about this is it actually supports Markdown. All right, look at that. I what that does, puts a line in, right? So this is Markdown and you can do your, your headings. All right, different headings with different options. So that's actually supporting Markdown. And the way that is working, because this one's gonna get quite big, is it's storing it as a string inside of the properties. All right, the next one is actually interesting. Uh, it's called an image selector. All right, you can see here, I've got an image of this uh, lady. I'm just gonna minimize this for the purposes of the video. Uh, don't freak out when you see me doing this. This is a, a plugin that I have been playing with. It's not gonna be covered in this video. I think it's covered in a previous video. I don't use it very often, but it is handy in this one particular example to make the image a nicer size. All right, so we can come in here and we can pick a picture. All right, and the way this is working is it's basically connected up to a folder. All right, if we have a look here, uh, image, where image selector. All right, so I've actually got it pointing to a folder and then it's displaying all the images that are available in that folder and I can pick one. Quite handy. All right, inline select. I'm using these a lot, a drop down option. Here I can select A or B. This one's easy. But this one is cool. Here I can select A or B and the result is actually one or two. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've got a drop down, I've got visual options, and then I've got an actual value in the background that's getting saved. Now, there is an issue with this that we uh, we have been discussing. Um, it's actually more visible in here actually, and it's the fact that we have, let's say we have a rhinoceros at speed 40, if we go back and there, it actually changes to donkey. Now, uh, Lemons is aware of this. I don't think he knows a real way to fix this at this point. What it's doing is it's actually defaulting back to the first option that has the same value in the background. So this is where this is kind of problematic um, in that this particular use case, I have lots of different animals that all have the same speed and it's changing back to the one at the top. So. Lemons is aware, just so you're aware in case you see that one situation changing where that this is a bit of a problem. Um, we'll come back to here though. So obviously we've got this one here. We've got A, we've got one hour, B, two hours. So you can add strings in there as well. All right, this is a list option. Uh, option one, click the plus, adds it. Another option. Click the plus, that adds it. All right, so that's cool. I can think of a few situations that might work. Ignore that, that was for my testing. Uh, we've got number fields. If I try to put a string or a letter in there, it doesn't work, but I can put letters, no problems. Uh, we can actually add the ability to have a default value. So here we can see it's defaulting to 50. All right, I wonder if I actually go back yeah, no, it's changed now, but the first time you open the note, you'll have a default button. All right, progress bar, look at this. I'm sure someone can come up with a really clever way to use that, maybe by updating the properties in another way would be nice. A select option, all right, so here we can select one, two, or three. All right, here we can go with different options in the background. See, it's one, false. I think that's actually null. Here we've got a multi-select. So that's cool. Uh, we can have a slider with a number. We can have a slider with a label. So these have got the labels at the start and the finish. Uh, sliders with custom min max values. All right, so you can define the ranges. Uh, a simple suggester, okay, options one, two, and three. That one's cool. Suggester with data view, getting more complex here, right? So this is basically a data view query. 
Oh, sorry, I clicked the actual note instead. I can click this button here. It brings up this entire list that gives me a list of all the notes that actually meet the requirements. Right, and if we have a look here, suggest with data view, you can see I'm actually pointing towards a tag. All right, and that tag is effectively saying any notes that are tagged with that uh, level two spell, I want you to display in here. I'm sure someone can think of a nice uh, way to use this. I'm always saying don't make character sheets in Obsidian. I feel like this is the sort of tool that's going to enable us to make character sheets in Obsidian. I'm not going to do it. Um, test text. All right, we can just write this is text. All right, text with a, um, a suggested option. So appointment location versus this is new. Uh, we've got one with a title. Uh, this is actually just showcasing the, um, the showcase option. All right, so showcase actually shows the actual text below it. It's just handy for videos. I should use it on everything really. Uh, text area. All right, so again, it's just a, a multi-line selection of text. Getting to the end here, toggles, false true. 1, 0, or on, off, like you can change that with any sort of custom options. All right, so they're the input options that are available inside of the Metabind plugin. And as you can see, like, that's that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Like, that's, that's pretty much all of the options that we need to make really cool stuff. And as you can see, I've already been using it. Like, I've made the travel calculator. I've come in here and converted it into a jump calendar uh, calculator as well. Um, I really love that it's updating in real time. All right, that's what makes it really sort of super easy. Now, their imports, there's also views though. And if we go down to the very bottom, if I change this to 50, you see all of these reset. All right, you've seen examples of this the whole way along so far where I'm showing you not just the import field, but I'm viewing the output of that property as well. That's effectively what a view field is. I just want to call out though, view fields support math equations and math formulas. So if we have a look here, we can actually see that this one here is actually taking two properties. So jump import strength and number. And if you see here, I've got the number here, which is 55. This is the import that's impacting the jump input strength. So in here, if I go 45, that will calculate to 100 because 55 plus 45 is 100. All right, so you can do maths. Now, I'm sure some of you are going, ah, ha, 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 yeah, this is cool. You're right. This is very, very cool, guys, because as you can see, we're starting to enable the ability to have formulas and equations in the background that are doing things. Cheeky edit here because I forgot something. Um, with views, you can also reference properties from other notes. All right, so here you can see that I've got a couple of variables that I'm bringing in. If we have a look here, though, you can see I'm using a view. And then I'm actually referencing the party configuration note, and then a hashtag base speed. And if we go have a look over here, you can see my party configuration note, base speed is 40.003. And if we render that, you can see 40.003. I'm also bringing in the danger level. And then just to show that it's possible, I'm also doing a calculation with multiple properties from other notes. So party configuration, which is the note I'm referencing, hashtag, and then the property name, all right, between the curly brackets will basically bring in that property and you can do maths with that as well. Uh, that is how I'm actually doing all of the, uh, the travel calculations, right? So I've got my travel calculator and it's pulling all of the data from the party configuration note into my notes about my, my places. If you have a look here, you can see the code is basically, it's referencing that party configuration. So hashtag property name, party configuration, hashtag property name. All right, very useful. It uh, really means that there's some cool things that we're gonna be able to achieve with this plugin. All right, so that's a quick view, right? That's, we've just shown you how to use, how, how, what this tool can do. So now we've seen the type of import fields that we can make, and we've also seen the way we can use view to sort of view the output of the properties live in the note and also use those for mathematical equations. So the question is, what can we do with all this? Where do we go next? Now, what I've been doing is 
getting some of these things ready for you. And if you go over to obsidianttrpgtutorials.com and you type in calculators, all right, you'll have TTRPG calculators come up. That will bring you to this note. And in here, I'm starting to collate all of the, uh, the different things that I've been playing with, uh, with metadata. All right, and if we go through here, let's try, let's try a currency converter. So a D&D 5th edition currency converter. There is an example in here on a calculator that you can use. It shows you how it's used, what it does. It shows you the required plugins and you can obviously click that and go through the install process. Uh, instructions on how to use this. And then here, the actual snippet. And look, all you actually need to do is click the copy button and go and paste that into a new note and that should just work. Now, some of them are a little bit more advanced. So the, the D&D 5E travel calculator, for example, uh, is a little bit more advanced um, and it's gonna require you to have a certain name or name for the note. And the reasoning for that is that down at the very bottom, we have some of that actually hard coded into this one. So please do make sure you look at the examples before doing this. But these are a really good way for you to learn how to use this tool. All right, because ideally you don't just copy the things I do. Um, you will come along here and go, oh, I've got my own ideas. And then you will come and share your ideas with me and I will benefit from teaching you, right? That's what this is all about. Um, now, in the start of this video, I did say, uh, I did talk a little bit about the issue with the, um, the, the inline select and how you select an option and you leave the note and you come back and it's actually changed. All right, so in this case here, we're talking about a rhinoceros. You select the rhinoceros with a speed of 40. And then when you come back into this note, it actually reset to the donkey. And the reason why is the donkey was the first option in the list with the actual underlying value of 40. Because they both have the value of 40, it's defaulting to that top option, all right, whichever one it hits first. Now, I have implemented a bit of a fix here tonight. So you can see I'm actually adding a fraction of a number on the very end. It's a tiny fraction of a number, all right? And that's on purpose. I've added 001 and then 002 and then 003. And the reason why I've done that is I wanted to make sure that these were all unique values. Because what that means now by having a unique value in the property is the next time I leave and come back into this note, the value for that property is going to be unique and so therefore it's going to return the display value that it references back to that unique value. So I fixed the problem. Um, what I've done is I've actually added in some rounding um, into my calculations. All right, so you can see down here, round. All right, we got round um, and then down on rounding to one decimal point. Um, Basically what that does, because like we're using fraction of a number, like, you know, we're, we're well below um, the dot point, right? The rounding brings that back up, which basically means like the impact of this is really, it doesn't have an impact, all right? It's not a concern for us at all. Anyway, come in here, have a look at the various different sort of calculators that are available, copy some into your notes and have a bit of a play. Um, and then you can use those obviously to learn how to use this tool. Now, just for the purposes of this video, let's just go through and let's find an easy one that we can play with. Uh, we are going to have a look at the PF2E jump calculator. Just because this is a nice example, it's clean and easy for us to understand. All right, if we go into edit mode, we can see we've got an input here. We've got the import, which is the type. We're inputting a number, which means this is going to be a text box that inputs only numbers. It will not accept any letters. And we're going to save that into the jump input strength. You can see in the properties, I have to find jump input strength. Now, it's worth noting that if I delete that and go back into preview mode and I enter an option, it creates that property automatically. So you don't actually need to create that yourself. You can actually just design these things and all that, add them in the first time they're used. That's pretty handy. All right, so we've got that. We've got the import happening in that number. We can change that number. Below that, we've got, well, we'll look at the rules for Pathfinder 2E, a long jump with a running start. Basically is equal to the strength, right? You can, in Pathfinder 2, you can jump the number of feet equal to your strength value. All right, that's with a running start. 
All right, if you're running, uh, if you're doing a long jump from a standing perspective, you can do your jump input strength divided by two. So here's where the maths comes in, right? So we can do a view query or an inline view. All right, we're doing a square bracket to start it and we've got a curly bracket with um, our variable name in there or a property name in there. And then we're simply dividing that by two. All right, very simple. So if our strength is 20, all right, so standard 20, half of that is 10, so we can see that is working. All right, we're doing a high jump though with a running start. So we wanna jump not long, but we wanna jump straight up. In this case here, it's the jump input strength, minus 10 divided by two plus three. I can't remember how I calculated this, I just looked at the rules, right? Um, but you can see here that what we're doing is we're actually doing nesting for the calculation methods. All right, so we're doing the minus 10 between brackets so that is handled individually. And then we're dividing that by two and that's handled again inside of those nested brackets. And then we're adding plus three at the very end. All right, so you can use those brackets to control your order of operation and make sure that everything is happening in the right order. That's taking me back to like grade 10 maths, guys. Don't ask me to explain that in any sense of real terms. I'm not gonna remember, no. Um, but anyway, as you can see, we can go on to do that even further. Using this, we can really come along and say, all right, well, fantastic. We can do a long jump for 10 feet. If we're not running and we're standing, we can go five feet. If we're doing a high jump, we can jump three feet up. And if we're doing a high jump from standing, we can jump 1.5 feet up. All right, that's pretty cool, well done. We've just made a calculator very simply, and that is a lot easier than the old data view query method used to be. Now, let's just have a look at this, right? So let's just go in, where can I do this? Back in the day, we used to do jump calculator. Here's the old version, right? This was using DataView.js. And as you can see, there's a whole lot more code. All right, it's not real time. I can enter in my 10, click calculate, and it does work, all right? but it doesn't work unless I press the button. So that's the that's the real difference between DataView.js and Meta, um, Meta um, Bind, right? You can see that it's a lot simpler to write. It's a lot simpler to read. Um, you can obviously do them in line, which I think is just fantastic. Um, and it's just, it's just cleaner and neater, okay? So anyway, what I do recommend though, jump into Obsidian TTRPG Tutorials.com copy some of those calculators over, have a play with them, learn how they work, modify them, right? You might have your own needs that you can play around with. Um, I think you'll be able to make fantastic things very, very easily. I am interested to see if someone can pull off a character sheet. It's not going to be easy, but it very might be possible. Still easier to use something like D&D Beyond or Demiplane, in my opinion, like a lot easier. Um, I think my time <laughs> that it would take me to make a, a fully functional working character sheet in this tool is worth more than it would cost me on one of those paid solutions, if I'm completely honest. Time is money, people. Time is money. <laughs> so anyway, that has been Metabind. All right, it's a fantastic plugin. I am really, really loving it. Lemons, you're amazing. Um, I'm really keen to see like where people can go with this next because you can see the level of complexity that is possible, right? You can, you can make some really cool stuff and you're gonna have to have sort of a programming brain to get to this level. I don't call myself a programmer, but I can sort of think on the logic lines and I can achieve things with a bit of help. So if I can do it, you can do it. I'm, I'm not at the javelin and the lemons level. I'm not even close, but I'm comfortable messing around with this. Um, just a pro tip, you know, like if you're struggling with the syntax, um, you can throw it into something like Notepad++. I did that so I can easily identify like all the variations of 40, for example. I find it easier to edit the text in an actual text editor sometimes versus Obsidian. So you might paste it out, make your edits, and then copy it back in and off you go. Um, but anyway, there we go. 
This has been Metabind by Lemons, a fantastic new plug into the scene. I'm really excited to see where this one's going to go next. Um, please do jump into um, well, ObsidianTTRPGTutorials.com, obviously, um, but come over here to Community and Support and come down here to the Obsidian TTRPG Community Discord. That is where we're hanging. I would love to see as many people sharing things they're making with this in there so that we can actually go through and do it. Um, what we actually have just done, and I'll drag this over here, is we've created here under the support section, uh, we've got the Obsidian support section. We've actually added a flag or a tag for Metabind. So you can actually click on that and you can actually see any posts people have made about the Metabind plugin. Um, so, you know, if someone's asked a question that you're asking as well, you might be able to find the solution to your problem there. Uh, here you can see I've already made the first post talking about how I've solved this issue with the, the underlying value being the same, right? The way that's changing. Um, obviously this works for everything, right? So if you're here looking for something to say data view, for example, there's all sorts of stuff and it's becoming a repository where you can go to get help, all right? There's a massive, massive community in here. Uh, I think we're over a thousand members now, um, the very, very active community and it's just, it's full of resources. So jump in there. Um, if you are enjoying my content, please do like and subscribe. Um, if you're really enjoying the content, you can jump over to my Patreon. Um, I am making an effort now to make sure that I'm not putting anything behind a paywall. All right. I want everyone to have access to everything for free. Uh, but if you do feel like you'd like to support me in some way, my Patreon is there for the price of a coffee. You, you, you say thanks. And I really, really appreciate that. Um, I want to just say a huge, massive thanks to all of my patrons. Like you guys are absolutely uh, amazing and you've blown my mind with how much support I'm getting from you guys. So thank you. Um, the community is growing. We're getting some fantastic contributions and it's, it's brilliant. Um, look, outside of that, have a great day and we will speak to you on the socials.